apparently about uh, worldwide about a billion people lack access to a safe drinking supply. And obviously this is a huge problem as health and sanitation go hand in hand with clean water. Uh, and not having clean water leads to diarrheal disease and high morbidity rate in infants. Um, this is a huge problem and uh, the National Academy of Engineers, has, for, which proposes grand challenges each year for engineers, has identified it as its most important one to provide access to clean water. So in doing this, uh, we've identified, well, we've, uh, in recent years, a new method called the SOTUS method has, uh, has uh, come about and which helps to purify drinking water. So the SOTUS method uh, uses plastic bottles. Um, people in the developing world will fill the, wa the water bottles with uh, water and then leave them out in the sun. And six hours later, uh, the pathogens and microbacteria should have been killed. Um, so this is method works with PET bottles only. And it's important to note that PVC and glass bottles will not work. So um, to, make, to get to these uh, PET tea bottles, you need terephthalic acid, which is the uh, monomer for the copolymer PET. Uh, so terephthalic acid has a high production cost, and we've identified this as a problem. So we want to know, can we make TPA production cheaper? Um, and in doing so, we hope to make uh, PET more affordable. So now, uh, Nora is going to talk to you about the chemistry. Oh, so now I'll give you a little bit about the chemistry of P uh, TPA. So this is actually how TPA looks like. It has two carboxyl functional groups. And the easiest way to make these two carboxyl functional groups is to actually oxidize the two alkyl group of the parazoline using oxygen. And this reaction is actually conduct conducted in the presence of a catalyst as well as a promoter. The most current process that actually uses this oxidation method to produce TPA is actually called the amico process. However, there is a major disadvantage for this process. It uses a highly corrosive bromine promoter such as hydrogen bromine. So it requires all of its equipment to be lined with very expensive titanium um, alloys. So it drastically increased the capital cost investment for the amico process. So we are thinking if we can lower the capital cost investment on equipment, we might be able to lower the TPA selling price. So luckily, we found out there's a new technology that just came out and got patented in 2008 by Cebic. It suggested a non-corrosive bromine promoter in the form of an ionic liquid. So this bromine promoter, um, ionic liquid is actually um, has a very high boiling point and so does not interfere with our reaction at all. And then only stainless and cheap stainless equipment can be used. So, we'll, so in fact, we'll actually lower our equipment costs and maybe we can possibly reduce the price, selling price of TPA and make PET more affordable, affordable to the developing world. But however, there's a big trade-off for this process. It, the ionic liquid is actually pretty expensive. It's around $25 per pound. So for our project, we're tasked to determine whether this new ionic process will be profitable given a lower equipment cost but higher promoter cost as compared to the amico process. And if our process is profitable, how much lower can we sell TPA for and still keep our process profitable and competitive to other uh, industrial processes? So as chemical engineers, we, we often have to scale up laboratory results such as the one got patented by CBIC and scale up to industrial sizes in order to produce in large quantities. So the first thing we did is we used a software called Aspen to develop a model, industrial model for our entire process. So I'll just now give you an overview of our process. Our process is actually divided into three parts. We have a first section that deals with the oxidation reaction from the parazoline I showed you before to TPA. And from this reaction, we're able to get about 25 weight percent solid of TPA that goes into section 200 for process, product processing and recovery. And from this section, we're able to produce around 800 million pounds per year of TPA. And the, and in order to save money on our solvent, we have a section 300 that deals with solvent recovery and recycle. So first now, I'll give you a brief overview of our section 100. So this is a schematic drawing of our section 100. As you can see, we have six reactors in total. This is because we're producing large amount of, quite large quantity of TPA each year, around 800 million pounds. And also, by using six reactors, it gives us more stability control. So if one reactor fails, the other five will still be running and not, will not strongly interfere with our TPA plant. So during our designing for the reactor network, the biggest challenge we faced was about heat removal. 
So our oxidation reaction is a highly exothermic reaction. It produces around 300 million BTU of heat per hour. And if we left this heat uncontrolled and then removed, it will actually increase our reactor temperature to around 1200 Fahrenheit, which is enough to melt and explode all of our equipment. So this is heat removal is key for our project. So we've been looking to several traditional methods for heat removal, such as using cooling coils, cooling jackets, and reflux condensers. However, these traditional heat removal methods does not really apply to our situation because first we're dealing with a lot of solids in our, in our, uh, in our reactor and a lot of equipment can be easily eroded by the solids in the reactor. Secondly, the amount of heat that we have to remove is just too large to just use these traditional methods. So after rejecting these methods, we came up with a unique idea of running two heat removal methods concurrently. So the first, first, we have a pump around system where we pump the entire reactor slurry into a heat exchanger where it cools with, in contact with cooling water, it cools it down and recycle it back to the reactor. And then we cool all the, in addition to that, we cool and condense all the vaporized acetic acid before recycling back. So using these two methods together, we are, we're actually able to maintain our reactor iso, at an isothermal temperature. So now I'll give you a detailed design of one of our reactor. I'll just go over a few com impo uh, important components of our reactor. As you can see, we have three reactor inlet feed, and one of them is oxygen. We sparge in from the bottom of the reactor, so it actually help to maintain a homogeneous mixture in the reactor. And this is the reflux, con oh, this is a pump around system I talked about before, and this is the reflux, con reflux condenser. And from this slurry stream, we're able to get around 25% of solid TPA. Now, now Maria will tell you more about section 200, which is about product processing and recovery. So now that we have our solid TPA, we need to separate it from our other recyclable materials in the process. So uh, some key design challenges in this section included uh, lowering the pressure of the slurry stream. So our reactor operates at 20 times atmospheric pressure, which is quite high. And since uh, we have a slurry stream, uh, it's uh, equipment is often eroded by, this, by the high solids. So um, after considering many options, we decided to use uh, a valves. And um, in preparation for the erosion, we've decided to use a backup valve so we can easily switch over when one is malfunctioning. Um, other design challenges include solid separation method. Uh, how can we uh, separate our TPA from the acetic acid and ionic liquid? And also uh, how to recover the ionic liquid and acetic acid for a uh, later recycle. So uh, to, to accomplish this, we used a centrifuge, uh, which then sends our uh, TPA product over to a dryer, about uh, 105,000 pounds per hour. Uh, and then all of the other equipment you see here is all used to recover our acetic acid and ionic liquid for recovery in section 300, which I'll go into now. So on section 300, we have the solvent recycle. Uh, so key design challenges here included uh, recovering the solvent and ionic liquid. Uh, these present different challenges as the uh, solvent has a low boiling point and the acetic acid has a very high boiling point uh, that's virtually non-existent. Uh, so we had to figure out what kinds of equipment we could use to accomplish both of these. Um, so we decided to use distillation columns. Uh, our first column, uh, the feed from 200 comes in and we separate acetic acid on the side and our precious ionic liquid, which is very expensive, goes off the bottom. Uh, the ionic liquid then travels to another column where we, we uh, take more acetic acid off the top and the ionic liquid comes off the bottom again. Now, along with ionic liquid, there's also some uh, process residue, some uh, high molecular weight impurities we do not want. So to avoid accumulation in the system, we take a purge right here. Um, it's a very small purge, so in this way, we are able to recover about 90% of our ionic liquid with, uh, with each hour and about 80% of our acetic acid. So now that you know that our process, which is a SABIC process, is technologically feasible, uh, we want to know, is it more profitable than the amical process, and can we achieve our goal of uh, selling TPA at a lower price? So Erin will now discuss this. Thanks, Maria. All right, so we've already talked about that our technology is definitely feasible, but we want to know if we can maintain competitiveness with the amical process, which would justify us being able to decrease our selling price of TPA and still remain profitable. So, um, so to measure profitability, um, we decided to use the internal rate of return. 
so we earlier and estimated that the emma coal process yields and i are around thirty four percent so we wanted to know if the saving process would yield and i are that's higher than thirty four percent so if it is perhaps we can sell the t p a at a lower price making it making p t more affordable for the developing world so actually you can see from this graph that um, when selling TPA for 60 cents a pound, which is the current um, going price for TPA, for both processes, the IRR is around 34%. Now, you may be wondering, why is it that the um, SABIC process is not more profitable, t given that we already told you that the capital costs are highly decreased and the ionic liquid cost is not a factor because we recycle 90% of it? Well, it turns out that what's impeding our um, profitability is the royalty fee that we have to pay to SABIC for using patented material. Now, with the help of our industry consultants, we've assumed that we're, we would have to pay Amoco around $24 million a year just in royalty fees. Um, as a result, the profitability, we, we are right now just competitive using the same pricing scheme, so we would not be able to reduce the price. How, um, however, we know that the um, royalty fee with SABIC is most likely negotiable, and so Perhaps under, um, just for um, demonstration purposes, if SAVIC did not have a royalty fee, then we would be seeing an IRR of 47%, which is much higher than 34%, and thus we would be able to reduce the price of TPA. Um, so the way that we have suggested to um, make TPA more, um, less costly, is to use a dynamic pricing scheme. So both of these dynamic pricing schemes here yield an IRR for the project of 34%. However, with the Amoco process over the production life of the plant, it's selling at um, 60 cents, whereas with our SABIC process, we would be able to um, reduce the selling price of TPA, and by the 13th year, we would be able to sell TPA for um, a little more than half the price that it is now. And this is our hope that if we can sell the TPA for a lower price, then, we, then the PET bottles for SOTUS would be more affordable for the developing world. Um, so in conclusion, we've determined that the SABIC process is definitely um, feasible and profitable, but the, um, but the uh, fees with the fees with SABIC are um, one factor that we would need to look into to make sure that we would be able to um, reduce the cost of TPA. Um, we would like to acknowledge um, our CBE faculty and the industry consultants for all their help in this project. So um, now I'd like to open the floor for any questions.